Hey guys, welcome back to MBBS Treasure Channel. Today we are going to discuss the hearing theories related with the organ of cortex. Okay, so uh, in this video we are going to discuss that different scientists gave different theories related to hearing or auditory system. Okay, so the first theory given by the Hermann von Helmholtz resonance theory it means that it proved the resonance property of the organ of cortex or the cochlear duct. What does that means? That the primary tone analyzed in cochlea is present in a spatial way. As I've explained that uh, due to different sound frequency, we have different uh, structures that get stimulated in the organ of cortex. Like for high sound frequency, we have the base of the organ of cortex that gets stimulated. And for low frequency, the apex gets stimulated. So he explained that uh, situation and then he verified the property of resonance theory like the low frequency at the apex and the high frequency at the base by performing some of the experiments through postmortem and the Andreas experiment and Popov's experiment. Okay, so these experiments prove or verifies the resonance theory that was given by the Hermann von Helmholtz. So what are these experiments? In postmortem or autopsy, we see the degenerative changes of organ of cortex. Okay, the degenerative changes of organ of cortex corresponds to clinically defined hearing loss. When the define when the hearing loss will be defined clinically uh, through the audiogram method, and it is also proved during the postmortem that they are present the degenerative changes of organ of cortex. When we have the hearing loss and it is proved through the audiogram clinically, okay, we see the degenerative changes of the organ of cortex that was seen in the postmortem or autopsy method. What does the Andrews uh, scientist perform? He does the experiment. He checked the reflexive changes in the dogs. Okay, he continuously provided the high frequency sound with the woofer to the dogs and in reflection to that he found that they find uh, he found that there is complete destruction of the base of the cochlea so it proves that high frequency sound when the dog is uh, uh, provided with high frequency sound then to reflex in reflex with that it shows the complete destruction of the base of the cochlea then in popov's experiment he showed that the local degenerative changes in the same spiral organ detected during prolonged intense exposure of high frequency and woofer sounds. Okay, so the same experiment was performed repeatedly in different organisms or through different methods to prove that the high frequency sound waves stimulate the base of the cochlea and the low frequency sound wave stimulates the apex of the cochlea. Next, what are the complementary hearing theories that have been provided for uh, proving the other aspects of the cochlea? What are they? The hydrodynamic Beckes theory or otherwise known as place theory of Beckes scientist. Okay, the scientist Beckes, he showed that the existence of traveling waves in the basilar membrane. Okay, he showed that the he proved that the existence of the waves in the basilar membrane and the maximal displacement of the traveling wave was determined by the frequency of the sound. Okay, so the frequency of sound was taken as the base for proving all this statement that the basilar membrane also possesses the uh, movement like a wave and that was proved by this Beckes's place theory when the maximal displacement was found when there are a uh, frequency of sound with different frequency of sound. So it concluded that the place theory of hearing equates okay equates the basilar membrane to a frequency analyzer. So we found that the basilar membrane is equal with the frequency analyzer. It analyzes what is the frequency of the sound according to the movement of the basilar membrane. Then the Lazarev, the next scientist, proved the auditory theory. What he proved? 
he proved that his early research was based on hearing and he noted that auditory sensation could be amplified the auditory sensation could be amplified by the coordinated visual stimulation if we are going to stimulate the visual activity then the auditory sensation is going to be stimulated or it is going to be amplified so he proved that the formation of a nerve impulse or sensing occurs due to chemical reaction okay chemical reaction by analogy with the visual analyzer he said that the visual analyzer is related with the auditory system and it amplifies the auditory system when it is connected with this chemical reaction next the rutherford microphone theory and uktomsky these two scientists proved that uh, the frequency of sound the frequency of sound corresponds means it is related with the frequency of impulse generated in the auditory nerve okay the when the sound waves comes then it is going to stimulate or it is going to produce the action potential so the frequency of impulse generated in the auditory nerve is related so that was proved by rutherford and uktomsky added that the correspondence limit of the auditory nerve uktom uh, the rutherford said that the this uh, relation was up to a certain frequency limit and that frequency limit was explained by this uktomsky the correspondence limit of the auditory nerve impulses to the sound frequency depends on the refractory period of the synapse okay he explained one more term that the ref it depends on the refractory period of the nerve synapse refractory period means the uh, time period in which the nerve cell will not be able to generate the action potential okay in between two action potential generation there is a small time gap where the nerve rests and will not be able to produce the action potential and that was explained by uktomsky that the whole uh, correlation between the sound frequency and the impulse generation depends on the refractory period of the nerve synapse okay so uh, in this video the important questions are what uh, what was the theory of hermann von helmholtz or what is that resonance theory for proving that uh, which three scientists performed the experiments and what are the complementary hearing theories related to this resonance theory